Hi, and welcome to Bible Buddy. And today we are reading for day number 213, and let's pray. Father, as we go throughout our day, we ask you for strength and courage and wisdom to carry out the work that you have assigned for us. Father God, open our eyes and our hearts to complete our task with integrity so that we can bring you glory. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Okay, so let's open up the book of Job, and let's open up chapter 30, where we left off yesterday. Okay. But now, they that are younger than I have me in the vision. Those fathers I would have disdained to have set with the dogs of my flock. Yeah, where to might the strength of their hands profit me? In whom old age was perished? For want and famine, they were solitary, solitary, fleeing into the wilderness in former time, desolate and waste, who cut up mallows by the bushes and juniper roots for their meat. They were driven forth from among men. They cried after them as after a thief, to dwell in the cliffs of the valleys, in caves of the earth, and in the rocks. Among the bushes they brayed. Under the nettles they were gathered together. They were children of fools, yet children of base men. They were viler than the earth. And now I am their song, yea, I am their byword. They abhor me and flee far from me and spare not to spit in my face, because he hath loosed my cord and afflicted me. They have also let loose the riddle before me. Upon my right hand rise the youth. They push away my feet and they rise up they raise up against me the ways of their destruction they mar my path they set forward my calamity they have no helper they came upon me as a wide breaking in of waters in the desolation they rolled themselves upon me terrors are turned upon me and they pursue my soul as the wind and my welfare passed away as a cloud and now my soul is poured out upon me, and the days of affliction have taken hold upon me. My bones are pierced in me in the night season, and my sinews take no rest. By the great force of my diseases, my garments changed. It bindeth me about as the collar of my coat. It hath cast me into the mire, and I am become like dust and ashes. I cry unto thee, and thou dost not hear me. I stand up, and thou regardest me not. Thou art become cruel to me, and thy strong hand thou passed thyself against me. Thou lifted me up in the wind, and thou causest me to ride upon it, and dissolvest my substance. For I know that thou wilt bring me to death, and to the house appointed for all living. How bitch he will not stretch out his hand to the grave, though they cried in his destruction. Did not I weep for him that was in trouble, and was not my soul grieved for the poor? When I looked for good, then evil came unto me. And when I waited for light, there came darkness. My bowels boiled and rested not. The days of affliction prevented me. I went mourning without the sun and stood up. I stood up and I cried in the congregation. I am a brother to dragons and a companion to owls. My skin is black upon me and my bones are burnt with heat. My heart also is turned to mourning and my organ into the voice of them that weep. I made a covenant with mine eyes when then I should I think upon a maid. For what portion of God is there from above, and what inheritance of the Almighty from on high? Is not destruction to the wicked, and a strange punishment to the workers of iniquity? Doth not he see my ways, and count all my steps? If I have walked in my, with vanity, or if my foot hath hasted to deceit, let me be weighed in an even balance, that God may know mine integrity. If my step hath turned out of the way, and mine heart walketh after mine eyes, and if not, and if any blot hath cleaved in mine hands, then let me sow, and let another eat, yea, let my offspring be rooted out. If mine heart hath been deceived by a woman, or if I have laid wait at my neighbor's door, then let my wife grind to another, and let others bow down upon her. For this is a heinous crime, and it is an iniquity to be punished by the judges. For it is a fire that consume it to destruction and would root out all mine increase. If I did despise the cause of my, my manservant or of my maidservant, when they contended with me, 
What then shall I do when God rises up? And when he visited, what shall I answer him? Did not he that made me in the womb make him? And did not one fashion us in the womb? If I have withheld the poor from their desire, if I have caused the eyes of the widow to fail, if I have eaten my morsel of myself alone, and, and the fatherless hath not eaten thereof, and from my youth he was brought up with me as with a father, I have guided her from my mother's womb. If I have seen any perish for want of clothing, or any poor without covering, if his loins have not blessed me, and if he were not warm, warmed with the fleece of my sheep, if I have lifted up my hand against the fatherless, when I saw my help in the gate, then let mine arm fall from my shoulder blade, and mine arm be broken from the bone. For destruction from God was a terror to me, and by reason his highness I could not endure. If I have made gold for my hope, I have said to the fine gold, Thou art my confidence. If I rejoice because my wealth was great, and because mine hand had gotten much, if I beheld the sun when it shineth, or the moon walking in brightness, and my heart hath been secretly enticed, or my mouth hath kissed my hand, this also were an inequity to be punished by the judge, or I should have denied the God that is above. If I rejoice at the destruction of him that hated me, or lifted up myself when evil found him, neither have I suffered my mouth to sin by wishing a curse to his soul. If the men of the tabernacle said not, O oh, that we had his, of his flesh, we could not be satisfied. The stranger did not lodge in the street, but I opened the doors to my traveler, my doors to the traveler. If I covered my transgressions as Adam by hiding my inequity in my bosom, did I fear a great multitude, or did the contempt of families terrify me, that I kept silence and went not out of the door? O oh, that one would hear me, behold, my desire is that the Almighty would answer me, and that my adversary had written a book. Surely I would take upon my shoulder and bind it as it crowns me. I would declare unto him the number of my steps as a prince would I go near unto him. If my land cried against me, cry against me, or that the fearers likewise thereof complain, if I have eaten the fruits thereof without money, or have caused the owners thereof to lose their life, let thirstos grow instead of wheat, and cockle instead of barley. The words of Job are ended. So these three men ceased to answer Job, because he was righteous in his own eyes. Then he was kindled the wrath of Elihu, the son of Barachel, the Buzite, of the kindred of Ram, against, Ro, against Job, and his wrath kindled, because he justified himself rather than God. Also against his three friends was his wrath kindled, because they had found no answer and yet condemned Job. Now Elihu had waited till Job had spoken, because they were elder than he. When Elihu saw that there was no answer in the mouth of these three men, then his wrath was kindled. And Elihu the son of Baracho, the Buzite, and answered and said, I am young, and ye are very old. Wherefore I was afraid, and durst not show you mine opinion. I said, They should speak, and multitude of years should teach wisdom. But there is a spirit of man, and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. Great men are not always wise, neither do the aged understand judgment. Therefore I said, Hearken to me, I will also show mine opinion. Behold, I waited for your words. I gave, you, I gave ear to your reasons. Whilst ye searched out what to say. Yet I attended unto you, and behold, there was none of you that convinced Job, or that answered his words. Lest ye should say, We have found out wisdom, God thrusted him down, not man. Now he hath not directed his words against me, neither will I answer him with your speeches. They were amazed, they answered no more. They let off speaking. When I had waited, for they spake not, but stood still, and answered no more. I said, I will answer also my part. I will, I also will show mine opinion, for I am full of matter. The spirit within me constrained me. Behold, my belly is as wine, which hath no vent. It is ready to burst like new bottles. I will speak, that I may be refreshed. I will open my lips and answer. Let me not, I pray you, accept any man's person. Neither let me give flattering titles unto man, 
for I know not to give flattering titles, in doing so my maker would soon take me away. Wherefore, Job, I pray thee, hear my speeches, and hearken unto to all my words. Behold, now I have opened my mouth, my tongue hath spoken in my mouth. My words shall be of the uprightness of my heart, and my lips shall utter knowledge clearly. The Spirit of God hath made me, and the breath of the Almighty hath given me life. If thou canst answer me, let thy words in order before me stand up. Behold, I am according to thy wish in God's stead. I also am formed out of clay. Behold, my terror shall not make thee afraid, neither shall my hand be heavy upon thee. Surely thou hast spoken in mine hearing, and I have heard the voice of thy word, saying, I am clean without transgression, I am innocent. Neither is there iniquity in me. Behold, he findeth occasions against me, he counted me for his enemy. He put it away, he put it my feet in the stocks, he marked all my paths. Behold, behold, in this thou art not just. I will answer thee that God is greater than man. Why dost thou strive against him? For he giveth not account any of his matters. For God speaketh once, yet twice, yet man perceiveth not. In a dream, a vision of the night, when deep sleep followed upon me, and slumberings upon the bed, then he opened the ears of men, and sealed their instruction that he may withdraw man from his purpose and high pride from man. He keepeth back his soul and from the pit, and his life from perishing by the sword. He is chastened also with pain upon his bed, and the multitude of his bones with strong pain, so that his life abhorred bread, and his soul dainty meat. His flesh is consumed away, that it cannot be seen, and his bones that were not seen stick out. Yet his soul draweth unto near the grave, and his life to the destroyers. If I there be messenger with him, an interpreter among a thousand, to show unto men his uprightness, uprightness. Then he is gracious unto him, and said, Deliver him from going down to the pit, I have found a ransom. His flesh shall be a refresher than a child's. He shall return to the days of his youth. He shall pray unto God, and he will be favorable unto him. And he shall see the face of, with his, shall see his face with joy, for he will render unto men his righteousness. He looketh upon men, and if any say I have sinned, and perverted that which was right, and it profited me not, he will deliver his soul from going into the pit, and his life shall see the light. Lo, all these things work it up God oftentimes with man to bring back his soul from the pit, to be enlightened with the light of the living. Mark well, O Job, hearken unto me. Hold thy peace, and I will speak. If thou hast anything to say, answer, answer me, speak, for I desire to justify thee. If not, hearken unto me, hold thy peace, and I shall teach thee wisdom. Well, and let's also go to Proverbs um, 17. Oh, wait, I don't think we're going to have time. So let's read Proverbs 17 tomorrow. Well, I hope you guys have a great day, and I will see you all again tomorrow. God bless.